lot of the times you get one chance at this and that one chance might be the only chance those victims get. This is by far our biggest raid that we've done anywhere worldwide. That we could be rescuing at least 50 children from this raid. I mean, it is a highly volatile situation. It is high risk. A lot of the men on site are carrying firearms. We've got girls' lives on the line here. A lot of the times here, when they do pat you down, real simple frisking, it's lower back. That, that's, that's where the, the butt end of the, uh, the firearm would be. This operation, we're looking at anywhere between 100 to 150 girls, with at least half of those being minors. If you took the knife plate out, bottom it would be the front back would be a lot less obvious. It's a full scale operation including the military, the special action force as well as Philippine National Police and Destiny Rescue. Can you see that? Tony you're trying on your bullet and stat proof vests for this road. Yep. The risks are real so we need to treat them like they're real and which is why we're wearing them. If, if your loved ones could see you now what do you think they'd be thinking? I get, I, it's hard to really say being that we're on the other side of it, but um, I would assume they'd be very nervous for us. Um, I think we probably try not to talk it up when at home, so we don't make them think too much. A lot of them don't realise how dangerous it can be out there. Like Tone said, you don't really talk about the risks and what, what, actually, could, what actually could go wrong. And um, yeah, I, th I think that with this particular raid coming up, it's, um, it's very high risk. This just takes it to the next level. Um, it makes it more of a reality. So for my friends and family who might be seeing this for the first time, that, that this will be a bit of a shock to them. Yeah, the danger is next level, isn't it, on this operation? Does anxiety or fear keep you awake at night Tony? Personally I don't really think about it a lot as in like dwelling on it sort of sitting there crapping my pants I just it's just in the back of my mind and um, I think I guess part of it is my dealing with it is not dealing with it just not thinking about it all the time. This establishment is actually a compound. It's in the middle of a lot of grassland. Part of the intel that we've had to gather hasn't only been sending our undercover agents into this establishment. It's also using modern day technology like drones, night vision capable cameras. We had guys there a long time before the raid actually happened, several days, going there day after day. With our guys going in there many times, building the case, they got to see there's just building after building that, you know, all, all connected and each one was controlled by a pimp and each of them had multiple rooms going inside. The compound was made up of quite a few bars. Each one of those bars had their own security and there were reports that each security had their own weapons, guns, whatever, knives. Some of them had guard dogs chained up. So we knew there was a high probability that um, it could get ugly when, when we had the raid happening. 
pretty much your last bar on that side and then there's a gap and then there's a karaoke joint that stands out by its own, all girls available. We really needed to look at the finer details of this establishment. 500 for the massage but it's 3,000 for six. The perimeters, the exit points, we had to know everything about that establishment, all of the ins and outs. We can't afford to let these 150 girls not be rescued. Our priority here is the safety of the girls and our teens. Because of the intel that we'd gathered, the guys had seen the different pimps with guns, so we knew there were going to be guns there. So I think as a team, we, we felt like this is definitely the, the biggest risk that we'd put ourselves in. Um, we were going there expecting guns to be pulled, shots to be fired. It's not the norm, is it, for you to be asked to be prepared to use a handgun should the worst case scenario play out? Um, I'm not a huge fan of carrying a gun. Um, it's definitely not how we normally operate, but um, this particular case requires it, so you either carry or you don't be part of the raid. We've been advised that we should get familiar with a handgun just because of the risks that we are likely to encounter. Obviously it's a last resort that if it's a matter of life and death then, then we'd, it'd be something we'd use but um, historically we've never carried weapons and usually the risks aren't like this so it's just because of this specific situation that we um, possibly could be carrying. Ready to fire. That's the only time we, we have to put a trigger finger at the trigger and then squeeze. Yep. Okay? No problem. Uh, have you fired a firearm before, a pistol before? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yep. But not the Glock. Not the Glock. Okay. The Glock, it has no safety mechanism. Carrying a gun until the situation arises, I don't know if I'd use it. If, if people are shooting at you, and there's a possibility that you might die and there's a choice between you and a pimp or you and a bad guy then I'm going to choose me any day. I think anyone would. Yeah, so we've just been going to the range to get familiar with firearms and because it would be nothing worse than if you happen to use something and you don't know how to use it. Shooter ready? Yep. Nine rounds and only one Bravo, all Alpha. And you said you just don't know how to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I've thought about whether I could pull the trigger and um, in the heat of the moment, I guess I'll never know un until I get into that uh, um, situation. Operation Phantom is one of, if not the biggest operation that Destiny Rescue will undertake, as well as the Philippine National Police. The logistics in this operation is massive. It's not just the tactical aspect of the raid that needs to be really well planned. It's everything around that that has to work like clockwork. The only thing I can suggest is think of your what ifs. It's in the organizing of multiple raids and recovery vehicles. So ideally, we'd like for them to be there already in position. It's also the volume of food we need to buy to feed the girls that, that we rescue. Okay, can you, can you make contact with her and, and book her in for that night? It's the emergency accommodation that we need to get. Making sure that it's secure while we process all the women and children. Our job more is to check um, the children or the victims that will be rescued. 
it's in the coordination of social workers and aftercare personnel so that we can start the recovery process right away. You've got Jackie to help you out. Um, you've got DSWD to help you out. Nothing can be left to chance. And we have to do this on a really limited budget. So we, we try and be as transparent as we can and, and account for every single peso out there, um, every single dollar that, that's been donated, uh, that it's all channeled into the operations and, and what we do here, and, and it's all channeled into uh, the aftercare of, of these girls. Got the hidden cameras yep. ready to go. Um, Chargers, computer, your weapons that we're taking. To have the sort of knowledge that you have. I'm presuming that you have some kind of like background of security or military training or something? Uh, yeah, we're highly qualified electricians and plumbers. So yeah, just average blokes. And we, we joke about it that we're, we're tradesmen and plumbers, but We've been doing it for over 10 years, so I think that qualifies us enough to be to say we're, we're experts at it. I think we do more training than law enforcement, law enforcement agencies yeah. and uh, seem always trying to be on the cutting edge and, uh, of our training and you know we're always working in the field so yeah I think I think we qualify. What are you using in terms of self-defence then? If the perpetrator will be carrying a weapon, then I'll be looking for one of the team with me who's also carrying a weapon to uh, give me some sort of cover. The team are carrying quite intense torches, um, 2,000 plus lumens. You shine it like that and then that, so hopefully that will put them off. If you're with a perpetrator, will be going in their eyes for sure. Um, but the main purpose of it will be going from room to room looking for every nook and cranny trying to find any kids that are hiding to make sure we rescue everybody. It will still be very dangerous because we'll be looking for the, for the girls and um, obviously if we're looking for girls there could be pimps hiding as well so uh, I was just thinking about that this morning, got me a bit nervous because yeah. there's a lot of, a lot of hidey holes there. And so if a pimp's hiding and you, you startle him... That's where the risks go through the roof, is if you stumble across a perpetrator, you just don't know what's going to happen. This was the first case that I've done that on a personal level I was thinking there's a chance this could be it for me. Like, I had a genuine concern that um, something bad could happen. So whether it was with me or with one of the team, but um, it, it was definitely the most tense operation that I've been in. Okay, uh, good afternoon uh, everybody. Uh, we are here to have a briefly Oakland final. This project hopefully negate the operation of uh, our target. This raid will consist of two distinct operations. First, the military will go in using the elements of surprise and shock and awe to disorientate the perpetrators and quickly seize control of the compound. These guys are the best of the best in the Philippines. Uh, referred by uh, an NGO, Destiny Rescue, uh, uh, in combating trafficking in person. Second, once any live fire exchanges are over, the special forces will give the order for Destiny Rescue operatives to move in and do a sweep through all of the buildings and immediate vicinity for any girls or perpetrators that might still be hiding within the maze of brothels. It really is a privilege to be working with the government on their biggest human trafficking case that they've ever had. Like, it really is an honour. It feels like we have really earned their trust.
like we've done so many cases with them before the Phantom case and we've proven to them that we do a great job and they love working with us. So it's great to know that you've got that level of relationship with the government that um, on the biggest case that they've ever done with human trafficking, they want, a, they want us on the team. Let's all pray together for the safety and the success of operation natin, please. Alamin po namin ang bawat membro at bahagi ng grupo ng buhay na at ilayo mo sa lahat ng buhay ng kapatid. So one of the good things about working with the Filipino police is that before an operation, both Destiny Rescue and the police will, after the briefing, will come together and pray before the operation. And um, that, that's just a blessing, you know, to us um, to be part of that and to know that we're all trusting God uh, on that night. I think the biggest motivator for myself and, and our rescue director is um, definitely our faith. Um, it's what drives us, it's what guides us, it's um, key to everything that we do. I feel it's challenging me or drawing me in to um, just keep on going and rescue that next child and keep them out. Amen. It started to hit home how serious and big this job was once the military were called in, special forces. And there was close to probably a hundred of those that were that were on standby and ready to storm this compound. Yeah, I walked around the corner there, didn't realise that they were all here. And I mean, we were in the briefing with them all, but when you see them all loaded up and the night vision goggles on and, and things like that, it's like, oh, it's getting, it's getting real now. <laughs> uh, we're just waiting on the bus to arrive, but just did a blocky, so it should be here pretty soon. As it arrives, we'll all load up and we'll um, some of we head to the operation mission yeah. orientation. Four buses, four vans, a couple of marked vehicles, a couple of unmarked vehicles like Hiluxes, and two ambulances. Some people might think because of the risks involved with this raid, it would be easier and wiser just to leave the operation to the military. I'd say it's very important for us as death and rescue personnel to demonstrate to our government counterparts that we're willing to stand shoulder to shoulder with them in this fight to end child sexual exploitation. It's death and rescue that have built this case from the ground up. How could we expect someone else to put their life on the line if we weren't willing to lead by example? from our boys who are on site right now. Uh, we've planted some informants there earlier today and they've been surveying the mood, the atmosphere. Our boys have said that it's business as usual up there. We, we got the green light to uh, move forward. It looks like things have been really tight, no leaks, and we're actually gonna get all these kids out tonight, which is extremely cool. A lot of the times you get one chance at this, and that one chance might be the only chance those girls get. So you got to get it right the first time. Every step of the way is thought out and calculated. Um, it has to be. We're, we've got girls' lives on the line here. You know, I'm, I'm feeling anxious because, I mean, it, it is a high risk. It's definitely something I've been thinking about all day and I had little moments of being emotional about it. Um, you know, worst case scenario. You know, you, you just never know when your time's up. And, um, yeah, it's, it's 
probably the, one of the tricky parts of the job, the job I guess. My team, they've all chosen to put themselves at risk, but you do feel a burden to do all that you can do to ensure they are at the level of skill that they need to be to minimise risks and they can be as safe as they can be in a potentially volatile and dangerous situation. I started to hit home that this could go very bad tonight, you know. And it was on the way there that we decided to take out health and life insurance over the phone. This is the worst bit, I reckon. We're still waiting for that it's on or off signal. basically just ran towards the building. Just ahead of us, the armed forces were still lying hidden in the rice fields. And coming out with one of the perps, one of the traffickers, was an armed guard covered in mud. And so was the perp, you know, and so he'd been dragged through the mud trying to escape and was under arrest. As the raid happens, it's like an overload of our senses. We've got vicious dogs barking and, and snarling, still on a chain, but sort of trying to get at us. Watch the dogs. The, the adrenaline was pumping. We had no idea what we we're going to find. There's an open window back there. The goal was to secure the building as soon as possible, so we were going into e each building in, into each of the rooms, checking each room to see if there's um, anyone hiding, any, any girls, any pimps. And I remember entering into these dark buildings that you don't know who, who'd been left behind or who was hiding. They're vulnerable and scared too, these, these people that are thinking they're going to get arrested. Check that tree. Each time we open the door to check it, is there someone going to be in there? And if they are, are they going to be someone with a gun? So we, we were all definitely feeling that tension as we're going from door to door. Inside each room was a single mattress, the grubbiest looking sheets that you could imagine. I, I, I would guess it's been months if not years since that sheet's been changed. 
and, and the smell, the, the smell of sweat and sex was just gross. Um, many of the places there were condoms or used condoms or just rubbish littering around the place. It was just a real hovel. And they were dirty, disgusting, cockroach infested places. And, and just a, uh, a, like a fly screen to cover the entrance of the doorway. But that's exactly the same place that moments before we got there that the girls were forced to go in and service customers. Yeah, it was just one of those times where you think, how could anyone live like this? And there was toddlers there and, and young kids getting around and it was just a, just a really terrible um, scene. Uh, I've just done a head count on babies and toddlers and there's roughly about eight babies or toddlers. We're still trying to get a final head count on, on everyone. Um, yeah, it's looking like a pretty big number. The toddlers and the babies, these mothers have been forced to work here, are they? Yes. So they've been living on site here. And in the centre of the complex was, was the 78 something victims that were huddled all in a big, big group. And uh, they're scared and crying because they, they don't know what's going on. They don't know that they are seen as, as victims, they've done nothing wrong. You've got customers screaming, I've done nothing, leave me alone, can I go, can I go? You've got um, pimps trying to run or customers trying to run into, into the fields. A very tense time. And it was then that it really sunk in that, wow, what we've accomplished here as a team um, was amazing. I think tonight went according to plan, no one got hurt. We managed to get all the victims safely and uh, all the perpetrators, even the ones who tried to make a dash for it. There, there was no chance of anyone escaping tonight. Uh, it went really well, really pleased. Um, really proud of this team and, and what, what they've achieved. Oh, very happy. <laughs> I mean, look at all these kids we've just rescued. You know? The final numbers haven't come in, but it look, it's looking like how many? Uh, so far, it looks like we've got um, 31 minors, 19 adult women, and um, 15 young mums and 15 toddlers, or babies on top of that as well, which we need to confirm the story of those 15 mums. So, at least 31 by the looks of it. Extremely happy. Um, when we got here, it was all go, go, go. Now it's relax. Um, that relieve, relieving feeling of it's all happened. The largest human trafficking raid ever in the history of the Philippines. So, yeah, it's just such a weight lifted off our shoulders, but also such a an awesome feeling of accomplishment and you know satisfying that we rescued these girls. Finally it's done. How does it feel? Absolute relief and um, just knowing that a whole bunch of kids are going to go to bed tonight and just sleep and not have to be raped. It's pretty cool. Every time we do a raid what we're wanting to achieve is to get the maximum number of children and young women out and put them on a different trajectory. We've got them out, we help them 
pursue other careers and other opportunities outside of the sex trade. And you know, that's the big reason why we do it. We want to get kids out of the sex trade and we want to help them stay free.